Hello. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, so I'm going to let you continue <laughs> with your presentation. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, all right. So uh, let's start. Uh, so 15 things you should know uh, about Spacey. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm missing a little bit a crowd interaction here, uh, since uh, usually I would ask about your experience and what you know about Spacey. And, uh, uh, yes, just like to get a grasp of the experience. So uh, I'm just assuming there is uh, at least some people who are not like super experts in natural language processing. So um, Let's just like start a little bit about what is natural language processing, uh, because probably you read a lot about AI, natural language processing, speech assistance, Alexa, and all these things um, in the news and media. Likely you use one of the services uh, on a daily basis. So NLP is uh, uh, natural language processing, or abbreviated as NLP, uh, is basically uh, there's a, a lot of data text, written text, uh, spoken text, whatever. It's a real avalanche of data, especially since we have the internet. There's more and more data. There's not just like books and letters and postcards you write to each other. Yeah, there's all the internet and all the stuff now. Um, so in general, basically, uh, there are two types of data, the structured data and unstructured data. And only 20% of the data um, we have is assumed to be structured. So the, the vast majority, 80%, you see on the lower left side, lower side, is unstructured. And text, any verbal or sign communications, pictures, movies, x-rays, pink noise, singularities, all this is unstructured data. And this is the vast majority. Um, in fact, we don't really know. It's just like an estimate, the old 80-20 estimate, which usually works really well. Some applications of natural language processing you are familiar with, like chatbots are really, were really hyped, so we, it's called like dialogue systems. Um, there's machine translation, which is pretty good for many languages nowadays. Um, sentiment analysis, so how, what's, how do people feel when they write, and also like trying to catch sarcasms. Um, speech to text and vice versa, so dictation or having the computer read a text to you. Um, I think one of the classics is actually spelling and grammar checking, so you probably had this forever in your text editor, and there's other things like text completion, right? so start a sentence and the computer suggests how to continue. Um, there are many small things in text data, um, so a lot of knowledge, thoughts, philosophy, um, guidelines, laws, regulations, uh, poetry, love letters, uh, everything is in text data. And beforehand, um, we tried to, linguist tried more a rule-based approach in the past. So because we have languages, languages do have a grammar and we uh, building on grammar, you can build rules and um, a lot of stuff. So it, like analyzing text or working with text was a lot of handwork because you have to make up all these rules or you have to not really make up, you have to do research. How is the language actually being used? Because um, another big challenge uh, for languages, language is changing all the time. There's always like, a, young people inventing new words, uh, developing their own language. Uh, in, in Germany, for example, we adapt many words from the English language um, uh, into our own language. So the, language is always changing. And so it's really hard to keep up making all the rules and to do all the research to, to put it in form. And um, there's also an explanatory, the statistical set, which uh, you see like, this is like a field of data with many flowers and blossoms and guess who won? The, of course, the, the dog and the uh, one, um, I didn't find a better picture for this. So I used Ian Oswald's dog and um, thanks Ian. Um, so natural language processes, uh, NLP use cases, um, you probably hear a lot about, yes, you can auto write articles that's like robo journalism and is robo journalism a threat is robo uh, generated text and fake news a threat or an issue um and you will hear about of course yeah you have all these um voice assistants and like you will just use them for start a timer which um i did or you just like um 
uh, do simple stuff. But very, most of the times, our expectations on all natural language um, systems are a little bit overrated or over uh, exaggerated, or we expect more than we get. Um, and uh, and of course, there's a lot of hype going on. Um, so um, so, but uh, most uh, natural language processes uh, NLP um, use cases are not like trying to find a global solution. Just think about a little bit more like, okay, you are an enterprise, you have a knowledge base, you want to uh, really see what have you researched in the past and, and to organize this knowledge. So I would like to introduce you, uh, or show you like shortly like a short, a small other um, use case we did in the NLP space at Königsweg. Uh, um, the task was our client had like many, many uh, text documents from like um, decades of research and they wanted to know, oh, actually, what do we have at hand? And so we want to understand what we really have and it's too many documents to read and search engine is not good enough because we have to um, look for specific keywords and probably the language was different. Maybe, uh, yeah, we, yeah, it wasn't really working for them to, they could really search into their knowledge. And so um, we use uh, NLP uh, to um, cluster the data and reorganize or make the data accessible to them again. So we had automatic keyword uh, generation as we see here uh, on the lo uh, lower left side. Uh, we have like two clusters. So we use this, the corpus is actually about biodiversity and recycling here in the screenshot. And we also used um, automatically generated summaries. So it's really easy to go there and see, okay, what's uh, for example in biodiversity or if you look at this screenshot, it's a little bit, it's, it's, it's more uh, clusters. You see um, before we had like these, like two clusters, one or two, which were look quite, um, um, yeah, the, like could be an equal split. Yeah, I always think I have to consider this is just like a two-dimensional representation of a multi-dimensional space. So let's look a little bit further here. So if we uh, cluster everything we have into five clusters, we see, oh, okay, we have this cluster number three uh, um, in, in light green. I hope you can see that. We have another big cluster five, red. But then you see there's like tiny clusters in between. Um, and but, and, and they all have like a major topic and you probably want to dive into the topic and see, okay, which other documents are connected um, and, we, and, and, and really understand what you have in your knowledge base and build on that. And you can do also funny things because here it's everything is quite, uh, or many things are quite close to each other. Let me show you an example where you really can see like a huge split and probably few Germans will probably get what this corpus is actually. Um, but you see a very clear split between two things. And actually the one on the left side is actually the contents and the, the other corporate, the, 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 the cluster number two, is just like editorial and extra stuff. And it was really great to see how we can automatically separate information from other stuff. And because we would also only would be interested in looking into cluster number one. So, just a little example how the summaries work and you, you can see like this are like on the left hand side you see the top keywords you, so you see like this is a cluster about biodiversity degradation soil natural forest conversation you see that all makes sense and we did not really had had to do like a lot of tuning for that so it was pretty amazing to see how natural language processing and the techniques we used could help us um, to uh, get all the knowledge here. Uh, so, okay, so another example here. So if you have natural language processing um, task as I, um, or you enjoy like working natural face. Um, so hello, I'm Alexander Handoff. I'm a partner and consultant at um, Königsweg. Um, my domain is AI and uh, data science. Uh, I'm a software Foundation Fellow. Uh, I like to organize, help organizing conferences. Uh, maybe we met at some conference, and if not, I hope we will meet at one of the future conferences once we can meet in person again. So, um, and Königsweg is my company. I'm one of the partners, and we do data science, AI projects, and we love to work with people and also freelancers on projects. For example, 
let me talk a little bit about our uh, natural language processing alchemy tool set. So as I said, there's a lot of blog posts and uh, natural language processing has been really moving fast. A few years ago, you probably, uh, would, this talk would have been about NLTPK, uh, natural language toolkit. Um, so uh, you read about things probably like Elmo Bird or GDP two or three um, uh, somewhere on, on Twitter or LinkedIn. And um, yeah, so I, but I would like to tell you a little bit more about Spacey uh, here um, because Spacey is a, a great tool for NLP. Um, so what is actually Spacey? Spacey was started in 2014 uh, by Ines and Matthew. Uh, you, um, let me bring them on the screen here. This is Ines and Matthew. Uh, in 2014, they did a really bold move when they uh, decided to start Spacey, open source it, and um, and and uh, because at that time, everybody like the whole hype said. Oh yes, uh, this is um, uh, everything in natural language will be go to the cloud, and people really try to push for yes, we have these general services. Uh, natural language will be solved like you can throw any data at our cloud systems, and they will give you the right answers. Um, turns out, um, natural language needs a lot of fine tuning, so you, it's really. It's, it's, it's necessary to really work in the domain to stay in a specific corpus because most of the NLP tasks are not really uh, addressing. Uh, we want to answer everything or any question in the world. That's something Google wants, but if you are in a company, you really only want to see what's in our knowledge base. And very likely you don't want to uh, even like uh, contaminate it with outside knowledge because uh, it's, you want to see what's your knowledge and you can always Google. Uh, it's, this NLP is not the task for that. So uh, they started Spacey. So thanks Ines and Matthew. Matthew is actually from Australia. He was uh, in, um, in, in, he was a researcher and he moved to Berlin and they met and uh, they started something great. So their company is called Explosion AI. And uh, Spacey is, uh, a stable open source library. Um, it supports nowadays more than 55 languages. Uh, it comes with many pre-trained language models. So you, you really have a solid starting ground for natural language tasks. Now it's designed for production usage. So, and the key advantages are it's, it's fast, it's it's intuitive. It has also like a great documentation. Uh, so uh, there's examples and really very good explanations for everything on the Spacey website. Um, and it also supports the, the simple deep learning implementations. So um, so there's a lot of out of the box of thought. So for named entity recognition. So uh, is this a person or a company? Um, part of speech tagging pause. So, which, which, yeah, labeled dependency and so on. I'll still see a little bit more about that if you don't know the terms yet. Don't worry. The building blocks of Spacey uh, is tokenization. So you basically, it's just like take each word. Each word here is a token, and punctuation is a token. So that's uh, that's, that's kind of part of speech is cat is a noun, scratched as a verb, um, lemmatization like cats. To cats, like it's just like from plural to singular or scratch to scratch, so to the past tense to uh, just like the verb. Um, also, there's stuff like sentence boundary detection. So something like "Hello, Mrs. Poppins" is probably not obvious because um, uh, uh, the, the, it's, it, the the Mrs. is this is Mrs. is not the end of the sentence. It's just an abbreviation. Um, uh, Spacey can also uh, recognize um, named entities. Uh, so Mary Poppins is a person, Apple is a company. This of course depends on the language model you use and basically the knowledge you can get from there. So to distinguish between Apple, the fruit and Apple, the company, uh, it actually depends on the context. Uh, so uh, you wouldn't say, oh, today I ate Apple. Um, probably uh, nobody can do that because the company is just like, so expensive, <laughs> so nobody can eat it. Uh, so likely is the fruit. So um, maybe Apple can eat a startup, uh, but I think that's, uh, yeah, anyway. 
Uh, okay, serialization, like it's just like saving uh, your NLP documents, um, a little bit more about documents later. Um, we have dependency parsings. So actually how do the tokens, the words, everything in the sentence basically depend on each other? Um, how are they linked? Uh, you can train and update models um, here. Uh, you can classify text and you can also add rule based rules like for example if you have uh, like um, many companies have products or they what we call have have company speech so they use abbreviations for their uh, for their products and everybody in the company knows what people are referring to um so but outsiders won't understand and this is something you have to add to um uh, when you work with nlp and it's really easy with um uh, uh, spacey. So this is a very simple rule. You can add more complex rules to actually help understanding the um, text, the language we're working on better. So we have some built-in rules. Um, yeah. So, so still, although we have use a lot of statistical stuff in spacey, still we have rules. So for many languages. There's still like rule based for, for example, English plural is very simple. It's just like an S at the end and, uh, and stuff like that is built in Spacey. Um, it's, uh, they, the rules are more general. They, they are, depending on the language, are not covering every exception there because, okay, it's open source. Somebody has to maintain it. So if you find something new, remember, you might also want to contribute back. And um, of course, not all language, uh, not all features are supported for all the languages. So before you jump in, uh, just check before you get disappointed because you probably expect it will do everything. Because always keep in mind when you talk NLP and you see great results, they are in the English language. English language is still the most research that is done is in English language and Chinese. So you won't have the same um, uh, quality in other languages because they might be more complex or they are also not as researched. Uh, so um, there are also built-in models. Uh, here we have a language model for many languages like German, English, French. They are trained on multiple corpuses. So uh, just go to the Spacey website and check them out. Um, so uh, you have language models, for example, with word vectors. Um, so uh, for example, this is like the classic example here. Uh, uh, when you train uh, on a large corpus um, and you, we, we put this all into vector space. And then one great thing here is you will find um, things in parallel, like king and queen is parallel to man and woman. So basically this, the model is able to pick up um, these connections and this can help uh, and um, yeah working with NLP um, so uh, you can you can also start with one of the built-in models uh, um, many of them are trained on Wikipedia uh, and you can start from there and continue training and update your models with NLP update as well if you have a specific corpus you want to train on and always remember for many for these training these models you likely need a lot of data so it's not just like a few documents so you really need a lot the the more the better is unfortunately um, a rule of thumb here um and the latest language models rules like billions of parameters and this is beyond most people's or reaches but it's also beyond actually what we do require to make um, a successful um, nlp project uh, in your company so uh, yeah, we got that already. Another great thing here being at your Python Spacey is very Pythonic. So if you have a good understanding of Python, getting into Spacey is uh, quite easy. Or it's actually, if you don't have a good understanding of Python, I would really um, uh, suggest to, um, uh, to brush up your Python skills because you really should know about the mechanics of objects, iteration, comprehension, classes, methods, because Spacey uses a lot of them. So you very often we have some data structures and many different ways 
um, uh, on methods to access these structures in uh, with yeah as we need. So it's it's it, it has a very extensive API for many things. Uh, it might be a bit overwhelming at first. Uh, it's 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 probably not as overwhelming as the pandas API, but we're getting close maybe. <laughs> no, sorry. Yeah. So uh, don't let you scare away. Uh, there's like an extensive API. Uh, so um, so you have many access points to your NLP doc documents and to 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 to, to do things and stuff. So uh, there's there is basically not much you have to program yourself if you are looking for something specific. So the, the first my suggestion here is like uh, advice is yeah first look is there already a method in the AP before you start programming stuff yourself. Um, likely you will find it somewhere. Um, a great thing about Spacey is also pipelines. So uh, Spacey processes the text in pipelines. There's a default pipeline. So basically, here you see the text. First, it's being tokenized. So take the words, exclamation marks, and everything. And we tokenize it. Then it's tagged, parsed, um, named entity recognition. That's like the standard process we see here. And basically, this is what we call the NLP document. And you see, um, uh, here on the right hand side uh, before doc. Uh, this is not the last thing. So you can add custom, you can customize your pipelines, you can turn stuff on, off, add custom uh, elements to your pipeline. Uh, it's, it's, it's super flexible and uh, it's it also spacey is nice in scaling things, but it's probably you need a lot, little bit more experience in spacey to um, scale um, if you have a lot to do. So yeah, um, helpful is also the visualization in Spacey. Um, they are used to, it used to be a separate package also by um, as, uh, Explosion. It's called Displacey. And it, it now comes with Spacey and you can visualize dependencies and entities. For example, like this. Here we see the astronaut walked through the spaceship's corridor to shut off hall. Help. So we see astronaut is a noun, walk is a verb, where, so the astronaut worked through and you see um, here the spans, um, the, the, the sentence was uh, analyzed and we see these spans, how the things uh, basically belong to each other. Um, and Spacey has that built in and you can visualize it. Um, it's also good for um, to, to see uh, if actually the, uh, Spacey is interpreting everything correctly because this is not, sometimes this is also not what a human would how a human would solve this, or yeah, sometimes yeah, also computer make mistakes. Don't forget that. Or another nice thing here is like like here you can also of course do stuff like this. So we can say, okay, Dr. David Bowman looking for his Apple iPhone on Tuesday. So he's walking the corridor and looking for his iPhone here. Um, so you see, without any extra training, this is everything you see here is just like Spacey built in from scratch without any customization. We already see David Bowman is um, identified as a person, Apple as an organization, and Tuesday as a date. And of course, this is helpful if you want to extract knowledge um, uh, from, uh, from documents, or if you, for example, want to uh, um, analyze maybe, for example, court rulings, you could say, okay, you could even get from person, okay, this is not only a person, the person is also a judge, something like that. Um, or you can, yeah, and so on and so on. Like, a little time here. Yeah. So serialization is built in Spacey. So uh, you can save the documents, the vocabulary, and the model. I think you have these are like separate things you need to save. So it's not just one document to save. You always have to consider what was the model you worked with, the vocabulary, um, space. It's built in. Um, but remember, a larger project might it may require different strategies like uh, in, including a database because you can all, not always process everything from start to end. There's some danger zones. Of, of course, you have always to consider not only with Spacey, uh, also with, uh, of course, uh, everything you do in data science and NLP, like privacy, bias. Always keep in mind data is always biased. Just try to minimize it and learn how to work with the bias and do not just like say, hey, data is the truth. Um, there might be some uh, legal uh, things you have to consider and always consider language is never perfect. It's always dynamic. These are the danger zones. So is basically the only thing 
um, you need, or it says everything, uh, well, everything can be rule, uh, NLP can rule all the languages. Um, no, I, I, I pointed out earlier, strong NLP is really strong in English, Chinese. Of course, it's not bad in German, especially like translation is solved for many languages nowadays or at a very high quality level, but uh, the tasks might be different. Um, Spacey has um, a whole universe of extensions I would recommend to look into. Um, for example, like there's uh, some, uh, like an extension from Hugging Face. Hugging Face is also a company who puts a lot of stuff on uh, a, a open source um, uh, handy tools. For example, this is an example of the uh, neural core reference. So what is neural core reference? So if you say Angela Merkel just announced a, a big tax package, tax relief package, um, the chancellor. So in uh, this, um, uh, the co-references would translate that to Angela Merkel, blah, 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 and Ang replace the chancellor for Angela Merkel again. So we can do stuff like this. And of course, if we want to analyze text, we have to know who is actually the reference for chancellor and um, Angela Merkel should be, of course, the same reference here because it's reference, it's, it's, it's a reference to the same person. So uh, what about bugs? Um, yeah, space is well maintained. Um, there's a good response time on bug reports and uh, it's constant and well documented updates. Uh, when you work with extensions, um, yeah, it might be harder to integrate. Uh, you maybe want to stick to a specific spacey version when you work with specific extensions because they are all not moving at the same uh, speed in uh, the updates and everything. Uh, so you probably need a little different strategy here. So you can, it's probably not only one environment you need for all the tasks. You have to probably split them up and uh, build a little bit more um, advanced architecture around it. And the, the development stages and or comparison to other tools I mentioned before, uh, like NLP, um, there's also Gansing text block pattern. Um, NLP is actually, I think, the classic for NL, NLP. Um, and But uh, likely you have also heard about Gansim. All these have uh, some strong tools and maybe a, a focus on uh, some things, for example, Patterns uh, has also offers simple web scraper. Um, yeah, but Spacey, uh, one of the strong suits is Spacey is usually very close to the state of the art. So for example, if there's a new language model, it's like, like Transformers, because uh, before we also, uh, there, everything was about uh, uh, RNNs, LSTMs, and all these arch architectures like in deep learning. And then, oh, two years ago, no, let's use Transformers. They do way better. And Spacey is really good and fast in getting state-of-the-art um, implemented into Spacey that you can actually use it. It's flexible, uh, it's, expand, it's ex uh, extendable, uh, and it's fast because there's a lot of Python under the hood as well. Uh, oh, Sometimes if you have a very special case, for example, if you want to build a contextual assistant or chatbot, you probably are happy just using Rasa. Um, yeah. And, but Raza is also uh, using some stuff from Spacey. So yeah, it's, it's, everything is connected as an open space. But last but not least, um, I just love Spacey. So it's great. So uh, thank you and stay healthy. Um, more like that. And yeah, I'm not sure if we have time for questions. Uh, yeah, I think we don't have time for questions right now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. No, thank you for no. that amazing talk. I think we can take the questions to the breakout room. Uh, where you yeah, sure. Questions. Sure. I'll be in the break room for a bit. So feel free, feel free to ping me with questions. So thank you very much. Uh, enjoy your Python and thanks everybody uh, organizing the conference.